uh, because we are joined, and he's agreed to take a few minutes from an incredibly busy schedule. And I am talking about none other than Attorney Benjamin Crump. Uh, Attorney Crump, welcome to Elevated Places. It is such an honor uh, to have you join us today. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, Dr. Ava, and to your audience. It is an honor to be with you all this afternoon. Yes, it is wonderful to have you. And, of course, uh, you represented the family of uh, Trayvon Martin, uh, a child uh, at the time of his uh, murder, and you did such a brilliant and passionate job of not only representing the family's rights, but also seeing to it that this case gained national attention and did not slip through the cracks as so many uh, of these cases do. They occur almost daily in America. Yep. And yep. I was uh, just reading uh, some words that you had to say about uh, Howard Morgan. You, you rep I, I know you're in great demand now, and I know it's difficult. Uh, we're, we're, we're all in this fight together to yes, give sir. value not only to our children, but also to us as a whole. I have a matter in Little in Pine Bluff, Arkansas, mm -hmm. where a hundred and seven year old black man was executed by the Pine Bluff Police Department. One hundred and seven years old. So it's both ends of the spectrum, whether it's our children or our grandparents. We have to make everybody respect the value of our lives as well because when you think about Trayvon mm -hmm. and you think about Mr. Monroe Isidore, that 107-year-old man, and you think about Howard Morgan, you say these things would never, ever happen to other people. If the roles were reversed That's and right. you had, uh, you know, a black Trayvon Martin shoot an unarmed George Zimmerman or you had a 107 shot eight times by the police department, mm -hmm. You know, people will be outraged. They'll be uh, rioting in the streets. But I commend our community for trying to have faith in a system that breaks our hearts so many times. But yet we still have faith in this system. And I do believe it's the best system in the world. But we have to make it work. We have to make America live up to its creed of equal justice. That's an excellent point, and I've heard uh, Minister Farrakhan say many times that if you look at the U.S. Constitution, if you look at the set of laws um, as they are written, they're impeccable. They're beautiful. Uh, they provide due process. You have a Bill of Rights. But it, it's the application, as you just pointed out, and, and it happens over and over again. Uh, Jordan Davis, uh, another example, that if if we had role reversal, if you had a uh, black man fire into a, an automobile of young white teenagers, what result would we have had? And, of course, Howard Morgan, uh, Chicago yeah. police officer, family man, honorable yeah. man. It, it's as though we we can't do anything to... Uh, climb up out of this black hole that we are in. In other words, we, we tell our children, get your education, you know, obey the yep. law, be an upstanding citizen, and yet this is the outcome. You're absolutely correct. In all these examples, what's most troubling is that you take Trayvon Martin, he's just walking down the street, minding his business. He's pro profiled and pursued and shot in the heart. Jordan Davis is in the car doing everything he has absolute legal rights to do. Yes. He's in the gas station with his friends. They're playing the music in the car. And the only one that complains about the loud thug music is this Michael Dunn who shoots into the car 10 times point blank range. And then you take Mr. Howard Morgan and you say, wow. Mr. Morgan is a police officer, an honorable man. Him and Rosalind Morgan are the best that we have to offer. That's no right. criminal history. They're married. They have children. They're productive citizens to society. But if he can be shot 28 times for driving while black and then live 
and be put in prison for 40 years, you scratch your head and you say, what about the little regular black person, the little regular African-American teenager, the little black and brown boy who's pulled over by the police? What chance do he have in that situation when you think about how Morgan was respectable? He was a police officer, and this happens to him, and there's no justice. So it's extremely troubling when you think about in every situation that we just named, Everybody seems to be doing what we wanted our children to do. Uh, be legal. Don't uh, be committing crime. Don't be doing anything violent. But yet, all these individuals met with harsh, harsh, violent circumstances in the face where this, the police or quasi-authorities that can, feel they can detain our children and I, I have to say this if you would allow me to i was sure. talking at the university of vermont and one of the things that i had to point out to them was when you think about trayvon martin's uh case with his killer and i don't like to call his name often but when you think about that trial and the lawyers who were representing him, they put a young white female on at the end of the trial. And I know many of your audience watched that trial like everybody yes. else in America. And they had the young white female say, my home was burglarized by a young African-American teenager. Yes. And it was almost to suggest that because you had one bad person in a, a race, an a ethnicity, a, a, a group, uh, one bad person, that that was an indictment on the whole race exactly. that we somehow could detain, we can confront any young black man that was walking in that neighborhood. Now, just to pose that for a second, Dr. Ava, where if, uh, say, the Boston uh, Marathon bombing, exactly. you had two white boys who bombed uh, a marathon with thousands of people. That's right. But nobody suggested because of that there that you could stop every white boy who walked down the street in that area and just confront and detain them. So why was it allowed in Trayvon that you could stop every black boy because there's one isolated incident? And why was it so easy for America to believe that our children, whether it's Trayvon, whether it's Jordan Davis, that they're somehow criminals uh you can demonize them and the jury accept that and say it's okay to give them less consideration to give their lives less value because we kind of think the killers are justified in some way even though there's not a thread of evidence that trayvon did anything at all to george zimmerman in fact the objective evidence was he was running away Precisely. You know, that's what he was running away from him, and George Zimmerman said that himself. So it's just really troubling how they're able to stereotype our children not only on the street but also in the courtroom. And you know, to your point, which, which is so profound, and, and we really need to, to hang on to that as a people, and for that reason, stay on top of this, not go to sleep on this, because you, you had mentioned in an interview about Howard Morgan, uh, somebody being concerned about us being desensitized. You can't, you can't get desensitized to the murder of your children, your elders, your women, and, and to your point, when when the school shooter up in Connecticut uh, shot up a, a, a school, yeah. classrooms full of little six year olds, um, exactly. theater in in Colorado. Well, this happens every day in in white America. They they kill each other. They kill us. But each killer is treated as some sort of aberration. The the the, the media acts as though this is shocking. It never happened before. Uh, this, there has to be some form of mental illness here. But with us, then the, the victim, as you just said, becomes the perpetrator. And we got to make sure we don't fall into that. Because what disturbs me most is when our community asks those kind of questions. What was he doing? Uh, this whole debate, which was so offensive to me, over hoodies. 
that that we actually yeah. allowed uh, that type of debate to rage on our talk shows, you know, on, on yeah. radio and television. Well, it, it, you know, we have to continue to try as best we can to educate um, not only America but the world that we love our children just as much as you love your children. That's and we right. want our children's hopes and dreams and aspirations to be fulfilled just like their children. So when we stand up, you know, a lot of times when I take these cases, Dr. Ava, they say, oh, there go Crump, and he's starting this controversy. And they almost overlook the fact that you have these dead children right. laying down on the ground. Like, wasn't it controversy when they decided to profile and chase one of our children? Or when you think about Jordan Davis' case, I mean, he shot point blank range ten times into a car of four children. That's right. And if he hadn't been such a bad shot, you would have had four dead kids. And that's so troubling that they could not come to a first degree murder charge with that kind of evidence. And then when you think of Howard Morgan, again, you have the police. And, and I encourage everybody to go read that trial transcript oh and go yes. read. Just, yes. you know, it, it is such a indictment on the court system. Uh, I think David Protest uh, uh, wrote the article, Ms. Rosalind Morgan shared it with me, that 28 bullets were not enough to kill Howard Morgan, but the 29th bullet fired from the judge's bench just might. Mm, mm, and I mm. thought, how riveting that was it wasn't the bullets on the street that killed them but it was the bullets that we shot in the courtroom and this is supposed to be the great uh tribunal of fairness and equality but there are so many things in that case that you scratch your head and say well over 100 bullets fired and there are no shell casings that they could recover they destroyed the van which was uh, a crucial piece of evidence you know, they didn't have any um, gun residue on Mr. Morgan's hands. So how do you overcome all of this and not indict the police officers, but indict the man who has 28 bullets in him, and most of them from the back? Yes. And you charge him. Yes. And then you put him in prison for 40 years, even though he's not committed a crime ever in his life. Well, you know. It's, it's so it is, and, 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 and it, we cannot ignore the the underlying, uh, and you mentioned about, about the media and the disregard for black life, uh, but the underlying uh, paradigm of, of, of black inferiority and white superiority, because these, I'm glad you brought that up, these decisions, these verdicts that, that are, are being delivered in these cases from Trayvon with with George with this man walking out the courtroom when when Michael Vick went to prison uh because some dogs were killed on his property he wasn't even present but he went yeah. to prison um as you said with Howard Morgan here's Marissa Alexander uh facing uh, if, if she were, were to be uh sentenced consecutively i think 60 years for shooting a ceiling the, the same stand your ground law that yeah. allowed these other people uh, to walk away uh, is being used now. Uh, she, she's not allowed to avail herself of that. But uh, if you, yeah. I know you're you're rushing, but if you have a couple of minutes, Attorney Crump, um, we've got a couple of, of callers that, Be, that really we, wanted to ask a, a question. Okay. Or two. Before okay. we go to the callers, sure. Dr. Can I can I say you mentioned Minister Farrakhan? Yes. And I wanted to say something that I think is the crux of the matter here, and it's one of those things that has driven me in my legal career, and that is Minister Farrakhan spoke to the National Bar Association. That's the mm, largest yes. association of lawyers of color. And I remember as a young lawyer almost about 15 years ago now, um, we were in Chicago, 
And Minister Farrakhan said that, you know, you lawyers, you take an oath to uphold the Constitution and be lawyer to this these words in this Constitution, but yet these same laws are committing genocide on your black boys. And mm-hmm. so you're yes, being sir. lawyer, but who are you being lawyer to? And, I mean, his words just burned in my heart when I heard that because I thought about the number of times I go into a courtroom and you see identical fact patterns with little white boys and little black boys or little white girls and little black girls. And the little white children walk out the courtroom with their parents and the black children are led over to be fake and printed and put into handcuffs. And you scratch your head and... I remember him saying, if this happened to any other ethnic group, if they were doing this to any other race, off, children, offsprings, that it would be a emergency. There would be no other profession, but everybody would become criminal lawyers, not civil lawyers just going for money, but criminal lawyers saying, we have to save our children. We have to save our race. Mm-hmm. But yet, a lot of us, we've turned to and look the other way, act like That's it, right. as long as it's not my family, it's not that important. Um, when we talk about jury duty, a lot of blacks try to get out of jury duty. And it's so sad because when it's their child, their son or daughter, oh. or their nephew or cousin, they want you to be on the jury, but yet they don't uphold their responsibility to be on the jury. So it's so many things that we have to be aware of. We can uphold the law, but also we have to call the law out when it's not being applied fairly. And if our judges, our prosecutors, and our communities aren't trying to be administer justice fairly, then we got to stand up. And if we don't stand up, then shame on us. Well, that is a beautiful uh, testimony, and, and it's spoken by an activist lawyer. You're not somebody in, uh, talking in theory. You are out here uh, carrying the banner for these families. And, and for people to say, well, he's starting controversy, uh, they need to look at the, the pattern that these families right. come to you seeking. First of all, w- before we even talk about a trial, you had to go to war to get an arrest. See, th- this yeah. is this is the other part of this. The, 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 the Kendrick uh, uh, Johnson. Johnson. You know, these families, their children are dead in morgues, dead in a gymnasium rolled up in a mat. Uh, They can't even get an answer from local law enforcement as to what happened to their child. So they're, they're coming to you, and you are stepping in and representing their interests saying to with which they would they would have no voice they they are up against a brick wall were you not there to step in and really use and jeopardize your credentials they don't get that either people that say that what it takes for somebody to get a law degree to get admitted to the bar to get a license uh, to practice law and then to utilize it for justice uh but we've we've got uh Callers lined up, and I see that uh, Mrs. Uh, Howard Morgan, Rosalind Morgan, is is on the line, um, waiting to uh, speak with you as well. And so, if if yes, you ma'am. could give us a, a couple more minutes, uh, I've I've had uh, Annie holding for a while uh, from, okay. from Chicago, and let me see if I can get her line open. Annie, you are live on Elevated Places with Attorney Benjamin Crump and myself. Good afternoon, uh, uh, Mrs. Muhammad and uh, Attorney Crump. I, I think you're an excellent attorney, and uh, I really support what you're doing. And Miss Miss Muhammad, you have a great show today. Thank you. Um, I just want to say a couple things. Um, well, first of all, you know. Uh, what I'm going to say is not obscene or anything, but I, and I don't want you, you, you two do not have to comment, especially you, Attorney Crump, because it's controversial. Okay. Um, the reason why all of this is, um, why we're portrayed the way we are in the media is because of these Zionists 
who hate our guts. They hate us. And they are trying to incite a race war to, for everybody to gang up on us and slaughter us to commit genocide. That's the first thing I want to say. The second thing I want to say, you know, um, Zimmerman and uh, Dunn, those two coward uh, racists, you know, I don't care what anyone says. You know, I'm a Christian. I'm not perfect. But we've got to have some black man somewhere in America who, you know, we have all these black killers who love to kill each other, these so-called gangbangers and just black killers. Y'all need to take them out. I'm sick of seeing George Zimmerman's face and uh, just get rid of them too, period. Uh, that's the second thing I wanted to say. Number three, um, uh, you know, uh, also, there was a um, black policeman in Park Forest who's right now, who was just indicted yes, by that racist uh, uh, state's attorney, Anita Alvarez, for shooting this um, 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 elderly, white, crazy um, senior citizen. Now, he's, the, his colleagues, they tasered this man. This man was, uh, you know, wave. he was trying to hit the policeman with a, his cane. He had a, a knife, and the, the, the white policeman, they tasered the guy. He kept coming. Right. So the black policeman, he shot him with a beanbag, and, the, and he's the only one being charged. Yes. This is ridiculous. Well, but again, is. I'm Absolutely. enjoying the show. But Thank you. Again, okay. uh, you don't have to comment, you too. Thank you so much, uh, Annie, for that call. And again, as you're pointing out, uh, Attorney Crump, the, the reverse role reversal. Yeah. Well, the one thing I, I must say, we, we can never give way to violence, and we have to try to make the system better. Because I, I would just hate to think of a world where we settled all our differences with violence, and we got to try to be civilized. Um, I don't want to do what we accuse Trayvon Killer of doing, and that is taking the law into our own hands or trying to uh, prejudge people. What we have to do is we have to be very critical in our analysis to try to get it right because our children are dependent on us. They're going to grow up in this country, and we have to give them a better country than we have. Yes, and, and you know, this is why in the Nation of Islam we don't carry or possess or keep weapons, guns, knives, not even a pen knife, because the other thing about us is we got to remember we, we're toxic ourselves after 400 years of being in a violent society, and, and our tendency is to carry out and ex- execute that violence against ourselves. You know, and the ultimate uh, goal is, is, is a peaceful existence. So really, we need, we need to be seeking self-sufficiency. Uh, but I want to, I want to get, uh, uh, Mrs. Morgan. Ms. Morgan. Uh, Mrs. Morgan uh, line open. Let me, let me uh, see if I can open up her mic. Uh, Mrs. Morgan? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Oh, this is Ava Mohammed, and you're on with us with Attorney Crump, of course. And thank you so much. How are you doing, Miss Morgan? Oh, I'm blessed, and I'm so grateful to God to hear you. I've been listening to you and Sister Mohammed and Attorney Crump. I am just elated over the fact that we are still in this uh, beautiful struggle, and I call it a beautiful struggle because I know that there is victory at the end of this tunnel. That's right. Thank thank you so much for continuously mentioning my husband and this injustice, along with the other injustices, whether they are alive or under the ground. And the ones that are under the ground that cannot speak for themselves, then we have to have those that are speaking for us. And Attorney Benjamin Crump, we constantly send goodness and mercy his way with his family. There is a large task that he is carrying, and we want to make sure that the communities and all over the world, that an injustice anywhere is an injustice everywhere, all at the same time. That's right. And we must grab Attorney Crump to say thank you as the spokesman for his safety and his love and compassion. That's right. And we, as people of color, If we come together so that the signature that has been put on the color of skin, 
does not become a wasteful sex. We don't want our wow. society and our children to be looked upon as waste that you discard That's in the right. sewer. They no longer need the cotton gin or for you to pick cotton. But if the large industries that are becoming, growing by leaps and bounds, it's becoming a billion-dollar uh, industry to put them, to make them incarcerated and keep them there for lifelong. And that signature on the birth certificate, what does it say? Another young person born into this society, and are we going to just stand by and allow it to take place in an injustice world? This is a world in the United States supposed to be of freedom and one of the richest countries in the world, and yet why? must we constantly be faced with this atrocity That's of injustice. Right. And, a, and a nation that goes around the world. world policing the rest of the world. Yes. Talking about yes. democratic principles, talking about torture, talking about yes. uh, women's rights, talking about rights of this and that, animal rights, all kinds of rights. And, and yet... You can become a police officer. You can marry, have children, grandchildren. You can be a young student in high school. God can bless you to have 107 years of life yes. on this earth, and it can be ended in terror. See, there, there's a domestic terrorism that God, is taking place right now, and we have to push back on it. We do, because when you're innocent... And Mr. Morgan, a good husband, a family man, innocent, right. two trials. So what, the Fifth Amendment of the Constitution of the United States that says you cannot be tried Try twice. twice for the same crime, double jeopardy, it does not apply to people of color. So therefore, the writers of the Constitution of the United States, what does it say? Should it be null and void and ratified and uh, rewritten again until it will totally... Uh, reference itself to what purpose? What purpose is it if it is not going to be used in the right way? And I thank you so much for this time, Attorney Crump and my dear sister, Sister Muhammad. It thank brings you. joy to my heart that Mr. Morgan is suffering there and that 29th bullet of the law perhaps could try to take him out of here, but I know God's past mercies. Fortify me in this distress that victory awaits us at the end of the time. Yes, it does. And we cannot turn around now. And we cannot slow down. And we cannot let our community fall asleep. And as you, uh, Attorney Crump, pointed out, I don't want us to forget this thing about th that's somebody else. We better come out of that spooky, false syndrome. This, this thought. I'm telling you, we go out of our houses every day thinking we're going to have a normal day. That's what Trayvon thought he was going to get some snacks, some Skittles at the store. Yep. Officer Morgan, uh, Kendrick Johnson, um, all of these yep. people, uh, Crystal uh, Brown's husband, Marlon Brown, suffocated. Yep. You know, yep. under, under a police cruiser, being chased, and that's on, on video. Uh, yep. And it, it just goes on and on, Attorney Crump. Yes, ma'am. And let me say this before I have to leave. Dr. Yes, Muhammad, I, I just think Rosalind Morgan is an incredible person. I, Ooh, I've yes, listened to is. her in mm -hmm. awe. I mean, yes. with her going through this personal holocaust, oh. but continuing yep. to be, remain Jeez. optimistic and faithful. Um, and it's, it's one of those things that she has said in interviews before, and I just think it's profound. She's not just fighting for justice for Howard Morgan, her husband. She's literally fighting for his life. Yes, yeah, that's right. It, that's right. It, it's one of the most surreal things when she begins to tell all about how they were good people, regular people, and this could happen to them. And it's like a nightmare, but it's real. And so what you just said, Dr. Muhammad, is so true. We keep saying, well, that won't happen to me. Mm -hmm. You know, that's abstract. Well, the reality is, Trace and Sabrina never thought it would happen to their baby, Trayvon. Right. Lucy and Ryan never thought it would happen to their baby, Jordan. That's right. uh, Ken and Jackie, Johnson never thought it would happen to their baby, mm -hmm. Kendrick Johnson. And Rosalind Morgan never fathomed that her police officer Come husband on. 
would be yes. shot 28 times by the police and even worse, charged with a crime and even worse, sentenced to prison for 40 years. Never thought it. And so what is the common bond in all of these situations? They were African-American men or boys, and they were not only profiled and stereotyped by individuals, they were profiled and stereotyped by our criminal justice system. So we have to work hard to make America be America for everybody because to most people who listen to these horrific situations of the individuals I just named, they say, that's not America. Well, unfortunately, it's the America that we live in and we know, and so we have to make America be America for us, too. That's Not right. For other people. That's right. Exactly. The the melting pot yeah. for everybody, but the people that whose whose blood and sweat made it the wealthy, powerful nation that it is. But Absolutely. Th- thank you, thank you so much, so, Miss Roslyn and Ms. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Muhammad. I thank y'all so much. I have to run into this meeting, but God yeah. bless you. My prayers are with you all. And, to everybody listening to Elevated Places, we have to continue to elevate America. Thank you, Attorney Crump, and, and we got your thank back. You. And thank you, Mrs. Morgan, uh, so much. And keep fighting. We're with you 1,000% of the way.